Good morning, or good afternoon now. Thank you all for coming today. I want to welcome you to this celebration of life service for Ray Fulton. Please turn off your cell phones if, if you still have them on, and uh, let's begin with a word of prayer. Father God in heaven, I thank you for your love and your faithfulness. I thank you for sending your son Jesus to die on the cross and to rise again so that we also can have the hope of rising again. Lord, I thank you for the hope that we have of eternal life. And Lord, I thank you that you are taking care of Ray, that Ray is in your presence today. Lord, I thank you for that that we have today too. Lord, I pray that as we gather family and friends, I pray that you would send your Holy Spirit, the Comforter, to minister to, to hurting hearts, Lord God, and help this day to be a joyous reminder as well as a time of mourning of our loss. And Lord, I just pray your will be done in everything. In Jesus' name, amen. Reading from the scripture, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 50 through 58. What I am saying, brothers and sisters, is this. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor can corruption inherit incorruption. Listen, I'm telling you a mystery. We will not all fall asleep, but we will all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we will be changed. For this corruptible body must be clothed with incorruptibility, and this mortal body must be clothed with immortality. When this corruptible body is clothed with incorruptibility, and this mortal body is clothed with immortality, then the saying that is written will take place. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where death is your victory? Where death is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, be steadfast, immovable, always excelling in the Lord's work, because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. This time I'm going to invite the angels, which is our nickname for these ladies and their they're friends. They can't all be here today, but um, they're coming to uh, sing Lift High the Cross. Shut 
Christ proclaim till all the world adore his sacred name. Lift high the cross, the love of Christ proclaim till all the Thank you, ladies. There are some people who are unable to be here today, so um, they're connected via computer on Zoom, and so they're watching online. Um, and so I, I say that to say we're going to move into a time of, of remarks and eulogy. And um, if you'd like to share a memory, we're going to invite you to come forward um, to use the microphone. If you can't come forward for mobility reasons, then just wave at me, and I'll bring the microphone to you. I chose the 1 Corinthians 15 passage about resurrection because, for our scripture reading, because it makes me think of Ray. Um, I can just imagine when he got to heaven, him running up to God and saying, now you need to explain this resurrection thing to me. As a chemist, I'm not sure how it's actually going to work. Um, and so I couldn't help but to share the fact that we have victory over death and that um, it is a mystery. It is a mystery, but um, his body is here today, but he's not. His spirit is with the Lord. And someday, and it's a mystery, and he's asking Jesus how it's all going to work, how he's going to be reunited with his body again, and how that's all going to get put back together. But um, this time, if you'd like to share a memory of Ray, I'm going to invite you to just come forward or, or raise your hand, and I'll, I'll bring you the microphone. Yeah, come on up. Okay. I won't tell that joke again about the uh, how much does a polar bear weigh, Joyce. She doesn't know. Enough to break the ice. You always have to start a good story with a joke. So um, this isn't going to be as profound as, as your eulogy story, but uh, thanks to your good pastor, we found out that today was National Hot Dog Day. Well, my dad loved hot dogs. And uh, when I found out about that, I thought of like three stories right away, because there's a million hot dog stories probably we could choose from. But So um, one of our earliest memories, or one thing I really loved about my dad, or thing I remember is when we were kids going to a baseball game. He loved sports course he was a catcher on the baseball team and um, he would take us down the Phillies games um, which was awesome we, we weren't too far from there and uh, it was such a great time but uh, one of the best things about going to a, a baseball game is getting a hot dog there so I remember getting my first hot dog at a baseball game you sit there and the hot dog guys carrying all these hot dogs and so dad orders us hot dogs and so we're in the middle of the row 17 strangers touch my hot dog as it's getting passed down to me and <laughs> And it shows up, and there's just like mustard on it. And uh, I don't think I like mustard, so of course I'm ready to cry, as any kid would. But my dad's like, Steve, this is okay. This is how you eat a hot dog at a baseball game. So just try it. So I tried it. It was great. Now I always love mustard uh, and hot dogs. So okay. So then here's another one. As I get older, my dad, he wasn't one to really ever go into the kitchen, let alone cook anything. Like, he can make a great box of donuts or a uh, can of rice pudding, even some toast or a bowl of cereal sometimes. But I come into the kitchen one day, and my dad's standing there. What? What are you doing in the kitchen? He's not just in the kitchen. He's standing in front of the stove. What? What are you doing? And it's boiling water. And he's saying there, Dad, are you making hot dogs? He's like, yes. I'm like, you don't know how to make a hot dog, do you? He's like, of course I do. Well, why are you making hot dogs? Well, this is what I'm feeding you guys for dinner tonight. So, of course, knowing he doesn't, he's never been in the kitchen before, I'm ready to cry. Now I have to eat this hot dog. But we wound up eating it. He's like, Steve, just trust me. I know how to make a hot dog. Uh, and it was good. So 
I never even realized until now that's probably why the only thing he knew how to cook was a hot dog, because he loved hot dogs so much. And so just more recently, too, my last little story, just visiting with Ray a week or two ago. Um, we were going out to get dinner uh, at some takeout. He wasn't hungry. Ray, what do you want? Nothing. Okay, well, I'm not getting you nothing. We're going to go to the store and get something. So we find out from Maria he really loves this thing, Texas wiener. Okay, great. He used to live in Texas, and, you know, he must love the Texas wiener. So uh, we go down to pick up the Texas wiener. I'm thinking to myself, yes, I'm going to get him this humongous hot dog, this Texas wiener. I'm going to come back. He's going to eat it even though he wasn't hungry. I'm going to be so happy. I'm going to be like the best son. I'm finally going to have, like, favored child status. So we get home. We unload our food, and, Dad, we got you a Texas wiener. He's like, okay, he got up. I haven't seen him move that fast for a while. He's like, comes over to the table to sit down to eat. I'm unwrapping my stuff, and other people are. I look back over. His Texas wiener is gone. It's like, it's, it's all gone. He's looking around for some more food. So, But the ending of that story is I never got the uh, favorite child status because I found out later the Texas wiener is only about this long, and I should have gotten like three or four more of it. He, he needed more food, so... Uh, that's just a public service announcement on behalf of my dad. But, okay, thanks. Thank you. Good stories, good stories. Somebody else want to share a memory? So this may follow on. Um, I'm Joyce, his daughter. And... Um, this follows on with the kind of just trust me, you know, you'll like this or trust me, you'll do this um, kind of story is he had this confidence in certain things, right? And so you saw that he was a swimmer. He loved to swim. And when I was a young child, um, I still remember me standing on the, at swim lessons. We had our swimming pool um, at our middle school. That's where we learned how to swim. And I was always had my hair in pigtails, chewing nervously on the end of my pigtails standing at the end of the diving board and I wouldn't go off the diving board. To this day, I do not love heights, probably why God made me short so that I don't have to be fearful every day I go out. Um, but so standing there and he got into the pool and he was at the end just treading water in the deep end waiting for me to go and he just said, just trust me, you'll, you'll be fine, just trust me. And sure enough, I jumped in and ended up, you know, loving swimming, was on the swim team in high school and, you know, his love of the pool. Um, he also took my kids into the pool on several occasions um, on vacation. Um, my daughter fondly remembers him being in the pool, letting her jump into the pool for him to catch her as well. So, um, you know, there's, I, I can't follow in my comedic brother's footsteps, but, um, you know, if you know Ray, you know that he was quite silly at times. And my daughter, who couldn't be here today, um, she had this favorite little game she liked to play with everyone that came to the house was her pretty, pretty princess game. And so if you can imagine Ray sitting on the floor with her princess crown, jewelry on, rings on, just happy as a lark playing pretty, pretty princess with his granddaughter. So. Um, so he will be definitely missed, and he loved this church and all the people in it. So thank you. I'm Paul. I'm the youngest. Um, kind of the trust me, you'll like it theme seems to be carrying on. So when I was about five or so, I was just terrified of the water. But Dad insisted that I should learn how to swim. So we go to the pool, and he's standing in there, and I come in, and I'm like desperately clinging to him and digging my little fingernails you know, into him, not letting go. He's, he's like, well, I'm going to teach you to float on your back. Just you know, stretch out, put your head back, and you'll be fine. So I, I can't do it. I'm tensing up, and I keep sinking. So he's like, come here, come here. He scoops me up. He puts his arms out, he's, so he's holding me up. It's like, all right, now, just lay back, put your head back, and relax, and I can't. I finally do, and before I know it, you know, he had put his arms down, he steps back, and he's just looking at me, and I'm staring at the ceiling. I look over at him, and he's smiling at me, and I start smiling back, and then I started giggling, and then I sank again. But 
So anyway, so he, he pulled me out. Um, <laughs> the other story was trust me, you'll like it, is roller coaster story. Um, first time I went on a roller coaster, went to Hershey Park. This was a couple years later after the swimming thing. And uh, so Haley's Comet, we get in the front car. So we're going up the you know, clink, clink, clink up the hill, and you're getting higher. I'm looking out the side, and like, we're really high up off the ground. So I'm, I'm white knuckling the safety bar. My eyes are bugging out. And uh, I guess he saw that. He looked over, he puts his hand on mine. He's like, You're okay. It's going to be fine. You're going to like it. It'll be fun. So we go over the hill. I'm screaming my head off. You know, we're going down the curves and up and around. Um, about halfway through, I'm like, wow, you know, going fast is fun. This is great. You know, by the end of it, he and I both had our hands up in the air, you know, goofy look on our face. And uh, he looks over at me and he says, well, what'd you think? I was like, Let's do it again. So we did. And then 30 years later, fast forward, you know, most of the guys in our family, we were in Hershey at my brother Steve's house. We went to Hershey Park late in the day. And then there was no crowds. So we were trying to get on as many roller coasters as we possibly could. And dad's right there with us, you know, hands in the air, goofy grins on our faces. And then one of the times we were going through the line, and I think my brother Steve might have jumped up and hit this overhead sign. And then we all followed. And like we all jumped up and hit the sign. And I looked back, and there's dad. He stops, he jumps up, and he hits the sign. And we went on the last roller coaster ride, you know, with our hands in the air and goofy grins. And um, you know, Dad was about 70 when we did that. So it was a really fun memory. He told me that he just had a stress test so he didn't have to go to the cardiologist. So my name's Doug, I'm the oldest. Um, I'm not as funny as the other uh, children, but uh, some of my fondest memories are things, same kind of themes of he would show us how to go do something. I was in the Scouts, he was in the Scouts, and he took us on a camping trip, and he actually came with, with the leaders and everything, and uh, it was great, and he showed me everything to do, and it made me really comfortable to be camping and everything. Um, showed me all his know-how, uh, was really impressive. And then, then I asked him afterwards, I said, hey, I'm so excited you're going to come on the next camping trip. And this is about the time when he realized, like, adults need mattresses. <laughs> so that didn't happen again. Um, I got to see his office at work. His, you know, Roman Haas was very controlled with security and everything. But he was so proud uh, to show me his lab and where he worked and his desk and everything. I got to sit at his desk. And so was, I have memories like that, just where he was so pride, uh, had so much pride in what he did and who he was and, and how hard he worked. Um, we could see that, you know, whether he was doing handyman work around the house, uh, was an exceptional craftsman, precise. You want cabinetry work done? He was your guy, He's so precise. Um, but the last thing I want to leave with is uh, the funny side. It's just, it would creep out at the least expected time. Um, there was one time at uh, dinner, I think we were sitting around the table, I was probably like 10 or, or, or 12, something like that. And it uh, seemed like a really serious tone, like right after work. And then uh, all of a sudden at the end of the table, there's somebody talking like Daffy Duck. <laughs> and it's just, you know, you have, like, you can picture Ray like that, just, like, super serious, and then just, all of a sudden, I'm like, where the heck did this come from? I haven't, I've, I've been here for, like, 10 years. Like, I haven't ever seen this. Like, where, you didn't know this was in your bag of tricks. Um, but I remember um, the serious things. I remember him showing with intensity how to do things. Uh, I learned so much from him. And I also remember just this uh, silly, goofy side of just, when he was funny, there was nobody funnier. Um, I think that helped tone my abs um, from all the laughing, but uh, he was a great guy and a really good man, and I miss him. Somebody else. Chris, did you want to come up and share something?
Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, praise God. Uh, the first thing I want to start with is that uh, our favorite scripture is, uh, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, and whoever shall believe in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. And I believe that wholeheartedly that, uh, you know, Ray might have left the earth here for a while, but uh, I know he's up there with, in heaven with God face to face, you know, and I, I thir thoroughly believe that. Uh, a lot of the Christians, uh, like myself, sometimes we look at somebody and we say, I wonder if he's in heaven, you know. But uh, there's no doubt in my mind about Ray. Uh, I know he stayed out in the path. I know he's in heaven now with the Father. Uh, our pastor made a little joke uh, this Sunday about uh, this little shuffle that he had. Like maybe he has a little heavenly shuffle now, you know. But uh, I believe that uh, Ray's up there now, and he's definitely not shuffling. I, I believe he's uh, running around or uh, doing somersaults or, uh, or even dancing, you know. Uh, I really believe in the guy, uh, past, I mean, what Pastor said, and I believe in the Father, that he's going to take good care of Ray. But uh, just for uh, something that happened here is when I re met Ray, I didn't, I didn't meet him too long ago, but uh, he was a lot of fun. And uh, the conversations we always had, we sat together in the back, it was always about ice cream, and uh, now I know he likes hot dogs, and, but he used to always talk, the first thing out of his mouth was, hey, Chris, what's the flavor of the week, you know? And, uh, hey, I love the ice cream, too, a lot, you know? And uh, just recently, we both got agreed on uh, moose tracks, and we both love moose tracks, and uh, I just happened to buy moose tracks, actually, before Ray passed, and uh, it's still in the freezer, I I have a hard time even thinking about opening it. <laughs> but uh, I really loved the man a lot. He was a lot of fun. And uh, I just uh, asked you, uh, next time you guys have moose tracks, you know, think about Ray and uh, call up Marie and say hello and see how she's doing. Thank you. Uh, for the family, I'm sorry. I'm sorry he's lost a, a great person. And uh, I know it's uh, easy for Ray where he is, but. I know it's difficult for you guys, but uh, I'll pray for you. Thank you. I never teared up over moose tracks before. Does somebody else want to share a memory? Good morning. My name is Jackie, and uh, Ray and Marie have uh, been great customers of our restaurant for a very long time. And there's not one of us there that isn't going to miss them. I came, got really close with Ray and Marie because uh, we shared a, a wonderful thing. We, um, all three of us, had, and my husband, had gone to walk to Emmaus. And um, I loved sitting with them. and right before their meal, every time they, the two of them would pray, and a lot of times I would join in and pray with them. And that's such a great thing to see people come into the restaurant and share their faith. And he is going to be missed by every one of us. Uh, I only had the privilege of knowing your father uh, for the past two years. Y'all did a great job. Um, and I just want to tell you, for the latter part, um, he carried his character. Um, because as I've gotten to know him through you vicariously in the stories and everything that was posted about him and who he was, that's the way he ended his journey, and um, I will be very intentional with my children as he was with you, and um, I was thankful to get to know him. Anybody else? Should I stand on this side or that side? Uh, 
I'll be brief. Don? <laughs> Got to meet her and Ray at the cafe in Newfoundland. And at that place, you pray after you eat. Don't tell them I said that, please. Uh, if it wasn't for our sessions at the cafe, we would have never met. And just a few weeks ago, right, you asked me to help Ray. I picked him up out of the chair. He's 180 pounds. He's a solid guy. And uh, I looked in his eyes, and I knew that there's a 50-50 chance we're never going to see each other again. But we do see each other. We will see him again. And his history is my history. He's blazed a trail for me. We were talked about a lot of the similarities we had done in our lives. And I'm glad that I met him. And I'm glad that I'm meeting all you folks here. So, again, the, the pray and after we eat down there, that's just a joke from Rodney Dangerfield. So, thanks for having me aboard. Thanks for the warning. Thank you for sharing, seriously. Hi, my name is Walter Hoffman. I'm a Murray and Ray's nephew. Uh, my memories of Ray are fragmented because I didn't see him very often. The last time I saw him was about two years ago. I think I was up and went out, went out to dinner. I always wanted to go out to dinner. Ray seemed to enjoy that the most. The um, thing I remember always about him is his smile. He's always quick to laugh. And I think one of the first times I, I can remember meeting him was at Springhouse. I did, remember that SAT prep course? It was on a, old, oh, the computer was ancient. I probably think it was a 186. It was a green screen and it gave you SAT sample questions. I think I was there with you, and I think that's the first time I met him. I don't know if I got to see his lab or not, but I don't think so. But I just, I remember, you know, he always loved working for Roman Haas. He, he always enjoyed talking about that, what he did. And um, again, his smile, he had the quickest smile everybody I, I ever knew. So uh, I'm going to miss him too, and I'm sorry for your loss, and hopefully uh, you, know, you can take comfort knowing where he is. That's the most important thing. <laughs> Anybody else want to share a memory? All right. If not, I'm going to invite the angels to come back to do the song, Be Thou My Vision. Thank you. 
nation of oh, Reading from John chapter 14, Jesus is speaking, and he says, Don't let your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many rooms. If it were not so, I would I have told you that I'm going to prepare a place for you. If I go away and prepare a place for you, I will come again and take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. You know the way to where I am going. Lord, Thomas said, we don't know where you're going, so how can we know the way? And Jesus told him, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. Just quickly, three observations. First of all, he says, don't let your hearts be troubled. If I can translate that to modern English, it's don't worry. Jesus is saying, don't worry. And the reason we don't worry is because we trust and believe in God. In 1 Thessalonians 4.13, it says, Brothers and sisters, I want you to know what will happen to the Christians who have died so that you will not be full of sorrow like people who have no hope. We have hope in Jesus. What is the place like? The second question I want to ask. In Revelation 21, verses 1 through 4, we see a picture. It says, Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no longer any sea. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Look, God's dwelling place is now among the people, and he will dwell with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain, for the old order of things has passed away. Ray just changed his address. He's in heaven where God dwells with people. He's got to see God. He's with him. He's in a place where there will be no more tears, no more death, no more mourning, no more pain. The final observation I want to make is that Jesus said the way is clear. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Thomas said, we don't know where you're going, so how can we know? And Jesus made it really clear. In John 3.16, which was mentioned earlier today, it's repeated in Acts 16.31. It says, if you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you will be saved. So what I want to just share briefly today is we have hope. We have hope in Jesus. We have hope to see Ray again. Today is not goodbye. Today is see you later. If we put our trust in Jesus Christ, God's one and only Son, we can all have hope to see Ray again. I'm going to ask you to stand with me now as I read a committal statement. The remains of Ray Fulton lay before us today as a tangible reminder of the person we knew and loved. Tenderly and reverently we commit him into God's care. The body returns to the earth from which it came, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Let's pray. Lord, as we conclude the service here and as we move to the cemetery, Lord, I pray that you would just remind us that Ray is alive and well. Lord, comfort our hearts with the hope that he is with you and the hope that we have to see him again someday. Lord, I again pray for family and friends that are here, that are online, and that were unable to attend. Lord, I pray that you would minister comfort and encouragement to them. And Lord, help us to focus on you and the hope that we have in you. And Lord, I pray that you would continue to bless this day as we remember and celebrate Ray's life. In Jesus' name, amen. On behalf of the family, I want to thank everyone for coming to this celebration of life for Ray. Everyone is invited to join us at the cemetery. Um, and if you'd like to do that, you can join the processional in the parking lot. And then you can meet us at John's Italian Restaurant in Greentown. 
If you choose not to go to the cemetery, you can um, go right to um, John's and you can wait for us and just tell him to put the bill in your name. No, I'm just kidding. But uh, so you're invited and if you need to go, we understand. And so we're going to dismiss right now and you can go. If you'd like to come by and see the family before you go, you can feel free to do that.